Exmoor Brewery Stag. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I don't know what is going on tonight. It is the night of the shit beers. I have tried three beers and they've all been crap tonight. I have tried the Harvey's Dark Mild. No flavour whatsoever. No aroma at all. No point drinking. Went down the sink. I have also tried the Hannon Alt beer from Germany. Slightly more flavour, not a great deal. That got drunk. I did drink that, I must admit. Then I thought I'll try the Smithix Red Irish Ale. Just no flavour, no aroma, nothing. That went down the sink. And I'm really starting to get pissed off now. I just want a beer that's got a little bit of flavour. So I've dug this out of the fridge. This is the Exmoor Brewery Stag Bitter. Naturally strong bitter, they're calling it. And it's got, it's got some good points to it. One of them being that it comes from the same area as the Cotley Brewery. Remember them? Purveyor of fantastic beers. This is from the same part of the world as them. And they, by the looks of things, do some really good stuff. I've been looking at their site and they do all the traditional British stuff. Won a lot of awards. Like to be independent. They were formed in 1979 as a as a sort of kickback to the mass of kegged beer that was being flooded onto the UK beer market at the time. And they thought, well, fuck you lot, we're going to brew some crop, proper cask beer. And that's what they've been doing. Very much like the Cotley Brewery. And in fact, they were, they were founded in the same year as the Cotley Brewery. That was 1979 they were founded. And a year later, they'd already won a camera best beer of Britain award. So that really does say a lot about them. And I got this from, I think it was Beers of Europe, and it looked really good. And from the description, I thought, this is right up my street. And I've sort of been researching them. They seem like a pretty good concern. They've got so popular that in 2015, they had to move to a new premises to expand, if you like. They are now the biggest brewer in Somerset, or largest independent brewer in Somerset, which is saying something. They must be popular. And this looks like a really good one. So let's stop gassing and see if it is. Right, this was originally brewed to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Somerset County Cricket Club. Famous players for Somerset. Ian Botham, of course. Viv Richards, I think, played for them as well. And if you're not into your cricket, these names will mean absolutely nothing. If you're into your cricket, you will know that they are two of the biggest names in cricket, along with Jeff Boycott and Fred Truman from the People's Republic of Yorkshire. In fact, um, Ian Botham's from Yorkshire, isn't he? He's from Scunthorpe. He's a Yorkshireman. You wouldn't think it, though. He doesn't talk like that. He's got a fucking attitude, though. Right, shut up now. <laughs> You already have wanted man in Liverpool. As soon as they get out of fucking lockdown, they're coming down here looking for me. After that uh, Jurgen Klopp, the Erdinger Jurgen Klopp video. Fucking hell. Um, yeah, well, getting back to this beer, this was brewed for the centenary of the Somerset County Cricket Club. That was in 1991. And it was so popular, they decided to carry it on. They called it Stag, and the rest is history. They said this beer is an amber strong premium ale with a good malty taste, a full hopped aroma and a long dry finish with a hint of sweetness. Traditionally brewed from crystal and chocolate malts. Now that's a really good sign. And a blend of four hop varieties, Fuggles, Golden First Gold and Bobek. A beer to savour. 
and has a great match for roast meats and steaks. Sounds good. Chocolate malt, you cannot beat. It's 5.2%, 500 mil. The pops are first gold, spicy, very much like Goldings. And of course this has got Goldings in it, so that's even more spice, even more earthy notes and some of the fruity notes that come from them hops. You've got Fuggles hops, which again, have got more earth and fruit. And the Bobek hops, which is basically Fuggles hops. So you're getting more of the same. So it's typically British. Sounds really good on paper. Let's see if it can deliver. Right, and get this cap off. Now, cap is just plain black. There you go. Now, I'm just hoping, really am, that there is some kind of flavor and aroma that's coming from this beer because it's been a really disappointing evening so far. I'm not a happy camper. What are we getting on the nose? Oh, for fuck's sake. Let me get some more in the glass. Right, now I'm starting to think I've got fucking COVID-19 because I can smell fuck all coming from this. I really can't get anything. Oh, for Christ's sake, is this going to be another one? Fucking hell. Please, no. I'm really struggling to get anything out there. I can get vague caramel malt and chocolate malt. But that's about it. There's not maybe a little earthiness to it, but it really doesn't smell of much. Oh God, please don't. Either I am the unluckiest bloke. I'll tell you what I'm going to do after this. If this doesn't taste of anything, I'm breaking out a Belgian double. And if that doesn't taste of anything, then I'm going to the fucking hospital because I'm starting to get a little bit. Fucking wound up now. There it is in the glass, one and a half finger head. Nice amber colour, as they say. Fair bit of carbonation. One and a half finger head. Beer is at cellar temperature, so it should deliver if there's any flavour. Wish me luck. <music> Bottoms up. Well, that has got a little bit of flavour. At least I don't think I've got COVID yet. Caramel malt is really what I'm getting. Finish is reasonable, more caramel malt. Let me uh, have another dip. I'm getting a hint of toffee on there, which is a little bit subdued. Body is reasonably, well, it's, it's moderate to be honest. Um, it's okay, it's not bad. Starting to get a little bit of the hop character coming through there now. There's like a dry earthiness to it. Not much of the spice that's on there though. The finish is toffee as well. So it's sort of caramel and toffee in the malt. Again though, all these flavors are subdued. Now, I would sort of be comparing this to the Cotley Brewery because they're using the same water. I'm assuming, coming from the same region, they'll be using the same hops, possibly the same malt. Now, I can't 
back any of this up. This is just an assumption. I could be way off the target here, but it's a fair assumption. The water, definitely, they'll be using the same water. The hops and the barley, unless they've got two completely separate suppliers from two completely different farms, and even if they did, and if they was in the same area, the geology wouldn't be much different, so there wouldn't be that much of a difference in your raw ingredients. It depends what they're doing with them, how they're roasting them. The biggest thing for me is the yeast. Now, Cotley have a strain of yeast that you can tell it's their beer, and it just emphasizes the best of the ingredients. What do I mean by that? Well, it really brings out the toffee malt and the crystal malts, the sweetness of the crystal malts. And I wouldn't say it brings it out, it complements it. And you do get that unique flavor in all their beers and it's just Moorish. It just makes the beer Moorish. I had a little bit of a dip from the Porter that I tried. There was something going on with the yeast. It was really bad, but that's the only bad one I've had from them. All the others have been absolutely outstanding. This is a little bit disappointing to be honest. I, I did expect a little bit more. Don't get me wrong, it's actually not a bad beer. The more I drink, the more it goes down. It's one of them ones that sort of creeps up on you. I'm getting a little bit more flavor now. The malts are tasting a little bit stronger. The hops, I don't really get that bitter finish. You know that lovely spicy bitter finish you get from bitters and best bitters. This is more like, and they have called this a bitter as well, they just say naturally strong bitter. I class this more as a, could even be a pale ale, even regardless of the color. You know, if the color was a bit lighter, that could be a, a pale ale. It's okay. It's just okay. That's as far as I would go with that. Um, it's quite drinkable, I will say that. It goes down nice. Body, a little bit thin, but okay. Um, that's about it, really. Low on flavor, low on flavor, that's, or lower on flavor than I would like. But it's okay. I mean, for sessioning, 5.2, you're sort of creeping up into the into the dodgy area. But I could quite happily have a couple of these. Quite nice. Certainly better than I know St. Austell were not in the same region, but they're not too far away. It's certainly better than anything they've come up with better than their bitter that they do it's an hostel i really don't like the stuff that they, they do at all but these are not bad i will say i don't know what it, it's like on keg i'd imagine the abv is lower on keg but on from the bottle it's it's just lacking a little bit of flavor for my liking i've tasted bitters that have got a hell of a lot more i do you know what i'm just thinking i'm Looking up there, I've got the some of the stuff from the Morju Brewery. Their bitter was really nice, and of course the uh, Cropton Yorkshire Moor bitter. And there's other bitters out there as well. I mean, ESB, you say what you like about Fuller's, that is a fucking great beer. It really is. And, you know, ESB, the, these two are very comparable. I know there's that Fuller's are a bigger brewery, but... I just think this is this isn't the best among its peers. So what's the verdict on Exmoor Stag? Well, it's not the worst bitter I've ever tried, put it that way. Certainly not the best. It's in the middle somewhere. If I ended up in Somerset and walking into a pub and they had this on cask, I would probably try some. But it's not the best and I always do compare like for like beers so the Cotley bitter that I tried recently 
I mean, that was an amazing beer. It really was. And as I say, the two breweries are located not too far from each other. I don't know, that's a stupid analogy, you know, because breweries want to be independent. They want to brew their own stuff. And they've got, you know, they've got their own strains of yeast as well. But I just think Cotley do better stuff. Um, but this is okay. I'll give it. I'm torn between six and a half and seven. Six and a half sounds like I'm knocking it. Seven, I think, yeah, I think seven is a fair mark for this. Um, it will not bowl you over on its outstanding flavour, but it is quite drinkable. No complaints, no nasties in there. That's the main thing. And as it goes down, the caramel and chocolate malts do come out a little bit more. So there is flavour there, it's just not massive. But that is not bad. In fact, I th do you know what? I'm going to give it a seven and a half, because seven I think is a little bit harsh on that. And I it sounds like I'm saying there's no flavour in that. There is. It's just I've been spoilt by the stuff from Cotley and the other great bitters that have come from the People's Republic of Yorkshire. I know I slag them off and all that, but fuck me, they do some cracking beer from there, up there. That's one of the reasons why I was going to go up there before COVID put the fucking mockers on it. So yeah, I think seven and a half is a fair mark for this, and I would recommend this if you're in the region. Try it on cask. It's not bad, and if you see it cheap anywhere else, you know, it's on an offer somewhere, or you can get it online quite cheap, and you like a reasonably good bitter, then yeah, get it. But there is better out there. That's all I'm going to say. But this is not bad. So seven and a half out of ten is a fair mark. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>